2 Corinthians chapter 4 again. Now I'm going to blame this one on Walter because of something he said after what I said last week. And uh, it's not about fraternization though. That's all. Although maybe a little bit. You can't avoid that. I just want to read verses 3 through 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now, last week I did speak on earthen vessels. This week I want to speak on the illumination of the gospel. The illumination of the gospel. Now Paul starts here with the word but which means it's coinciding, it's going a little bit as a different direction of what he said before. Talking about the hidden things of dishonesty which we have renounced not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now, he calls this gospel here, ours. This is our gospel. And he includes himself in that. And he is including everyone he is writing to in that. Every believer. The gospel is ours. We didn't create it. We didn't make it. But we do believe it. And we do preach it. It's ours. This is a, this is a personal salvation. This is a personal gospel. Now it's called in various places the gospel of God the gospel of his son the gospel of Christ the gospel of peace and actually in this passage the glorious gospel of Christ Paul also calls it my gospel but most of all and most often of all it is called the gospel the gospel in every single instance that it's mentioned in the scriptures is always singular. It's never plural. Because there is only one gospel. That's all there is. Even when he says, Paul has the, the ministry of the uncircumcision, Peter has the ministry of the circumcision. Guess what? It's still the same gospel. All he was talking of there was who was he talking to? Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and Peter was an apostle to the Jews. But it's still one gospel. Now, Paul does not go into, in this passage, the actual gospel itself. He doesn't give a description of it. But there's a reason. He's writing to those who believe the gospel. He is writing to those who know the gospel. He is writing to those to whom he had preached the gospel. That's who this letter's for. This letter is not to the world. It does concern the world. It does talk about it. That's where we're going to here. But he doesn't say or preach the gospel at this point. But he's going to tell these people what the gospel is about, what it's done for them, and what it has not done for others. 
The gospel does concern his son, the word of God, Christ and him crucified, who shed his blood and in purpose and in love and accomplished the purpose of the Father. Then he says these words here. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now, it's our gospel. Ours and Paul's. Ours and God's. He's given it to us. But if this gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The first thing I want to point out here, this word hid is not meaning hidden away. It's not buried in the dirt like you'd hide a treasure. There's treasure involved, but it's not that kind of hiding. The word means cover or veil. If our gospel be veiled, it is veiled to them that are lost. If our gospel be covered, it is covered to them that are lost. We are not hiding the gospel. We are here preaching the gospel as best we know how, as best we can. The gospel is to be preached publicly. From this place and from your house. And if, if the opportunity arises, at your workplace. I always like what Earl says when you talk to somebody. And I've used that. Do you have an interest in this? If someone has an interest, I can talk to you all day. Now, if there's no interest, I probably have other things to do. I can probably still talk to you all day. But I'd rather talk to somebody that has an interest in this than doesn't. Because if our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And there is that warning that Christ gave, actually an injunction, not to cast your pearls before swine. It's there. It's there. And it's just as true as this, if our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost. We are not hiding the gospel. The gospel is hid or veiled to them that are lost. Notice very carefully here, Paul does not say the gospel is hid to the reprobate. Now, the gospel is hid to the reprobate. But that's not the point. The point is that the gospel is hid to those that are lost. Now, those who believe now, when Paul was writing this, and right here, right now, those who believe now, who have been born from above, who have been given faith by grace, all of them, all of us, at one time, were lost. Now, what does that mean? Well, the logic is clear. At one time, the gospel was hid to you, and to you, and to me. That's the way it is. That's what Paul's telling. The gospel, if it's hid, if it's veiled, it's veiled to those that are lost. This is not a question of election or reprobate. Okay? Now, uh, I was going to go ahead and mention this. I heard a preacher state one time that the opposite of the elect is lost. That ain't right. He was trying to be nice. Now, I mean, you know, well, I'm not going to make excuses for him. And if I run into him again, I might mention it to him. Uh, because the opposite of the elect is not lost. The opposite of the elect is reprobate. That's just the way it is. There were those chosen before the foundation. Well, there's those who were not. And it, I had nothing to do with any of it. But that's what the book teaches. If there are those that are chosen, there are those who weren't chosen. I don't know who they are. I don't know any of that. But it's there. Actually, linguistically, the opposite of the word lost is not even saved. It's found. That's all right. It's found. The opposite of lost is found. What you said, David. Who finds people? Who finds people? 
the lost sheep was found. The lost coin was found. The opposite of lost is found. And who did the finding? Well, the owner of the sheep and the owner of the coin found their property in those parables. In that parable, single parable. The lost son came to himself. But that don't change the finding. That's just showing the result of being found. I still like that parable. The lost person is found by the one who chose him from before the foundation of the world. And this puts the credit where the credit is due. There is no boasting by the found item. This puts the credit where the credit is due in the good shepherd. Who goes out and finds every single one of his lost sheep. Other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them I must bring. And in order to bring them, he's going to have to find them. But he can. He's the good shepherd. He's not the mediocre shepherd. He's not the lazy shepherd sitting at the edge of the pasture whistling for his sheep. He goes out and finds them, puts them on his shoulders, and he brings them back in. Paul reminds us to remember the gospel which since ye have believed is now our gospel was hid to you at one time. It was veiled from us at one time. He is writing to believers this is now our gospel and it is no longer covered to us. But it is covered to those that are lost. Because then he goes on to explain how the gospel is veiled from the lost, whoever they are. Paul used to be the exact same way. Which also explains how it was veiled to us at one time. How it is veiled to some right now is the same way it was veiled to us at one time. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This explains what Paul just said in the previous verse. Again, the gospel's not hiding. We're not hiding it. It is the lost who are covered, who are veiled. There's nothing wrong with the gospel. There's no shortage in the gospel. There's no lack in the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone what? You can't leave that out. That believeth. But if you're veiled it's of no value. You don't believe. If you're covered, that's the problem. There's not a problem with the gospel. Guess what? There's a problem with us. It has always been a problem with man. The word blinded actually means, I looked this up, it means blinded. That's the deeper meaning. If you want it figuratively, it means, and I do like this, obscured. Figurative, figuratively, that mean, the word means obscured, and I like that because it's not that they don't hear the words you speak. It's that the meaning is obscured. They're obscured and they cannot see clearly. In that sense, I think the natural man is blind to the things of the Spirit of God. Well, say, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. And this was our state just as well as the lost is now. It's not that they cannot see anything, but their mind, that's what it says, blinded the minds of them. What? Which believe not. It's not that they cannot see anything, but their mind is obscured to the gospel. Specifically, they can be the greatest intellect this world has ever seen. They can be the smartest person you ever met. 
Well, they could be the dumbest person you ever met. That part doesn't matter. But the God of this age has blinded the minds, obscured the minds of those which believe not to the gospel, the glorious gospel of Christ. The problem is with us. That's where it was with us before we believed. That's where it is with those that are lost right now. Paul tells us who's blinded and who's obscured. Well, the word says there, it says, them which believe not. I looked at this, and this is one of them cute little Greek words. You know, pistis is the word for faith. Well, any Greek word, this word is apistos. You put A in front of it, guess what? It means the opposite. Instead of faith, it means faithless. Them which believe not are faithless. Hebrews 4, I think I quoted it last week. The gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us. But it did not profit them. Why? not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Why? It was obscured to them. They had not received the gift of faith. They had not received the gift of faith. That's what it means to be lost. They are blinded to the good news of Jesus Christ. To the glorious good news of Jesus Christ. Now this word here in verse 4, light means illumination. It's illumination. The illumination of the gospel is not seen by the lost because they are veiled by the God of this age. The gospel is not hiding. The glorious gospel of Christ is not a secret in any way. There is no secret gospel. Okay? That's an oxymoron and a lie at the same time. There is no secret gospel. It's good news. It's to be proclaimed. It has been written down. We herald it. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. That's the good news. The gospel's not hiding, but the gospel is not perceived nor understood by the lost. The glorious gospel shines, it radiates, but it's not seen by the lost. It's there. It's here in this book. You've spoken it to people you know, relatives, friends, acquaintances, strangers. But they'll look at you like you're crazy. Why? Because they're obscured. They're veiled. The gospel is hid to them that are lost. I've gotten that blank stare before when you talk to people. I have. And it's a thing of, of, of just utter, total unrecognition of what you're saying it's, and I don't know if I can do it but I'll try and I'll, we'll do it on the video <laughs> and you don't have to have the mouth open but you get that blank look in your eye and I don't, I don't like standing like this <laughs> and I felt that way sometimes when somebody was trying to explain calculus to me or something you know? but when you talk to them about Christ that's the look you get sometimes it's hid to them that are lost. There's nothing wrong with the gospel. You get this, you get this feeling sometimes, Walter, I've, I've said the wrong thing. You know, maybe I didn't say enough. Or maybe I said too much. No, no. You said what you were supposed to say. But it's just... That's it. Or in the vernacular, right over their heads. Because it's obscured. It can't penetrate. Without the work of God, Amen. the gospel will not profit them. Right. It's hid to them that are lost. It's veiled. The veil must be removed. 
How is that removed? Well, John chapter 3 put it this way. Ye must be born from above. What does that mean? Well, those who believe are no longer veiled, are no longer blind, and the gospel is no longer covered to them as it pertains to the glorious gospel of Christ. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your servants, Jesus, your servants for Jesus' sake. We preach, we speak, we talk, we herald, we proclaim. We are not silent, we are not secret, we are not hiding. But people don't want to see it. The world will not have it, the world does not want it. It's hid to them that are lost. And I'm going to tell you something. It's hid, it's hid to them that are in church. Right now. All around us. I pray. I hope. That there are those. Who know the gospel. In Armenian churches. I was in one once. And I know others here were too. And I believe Christ while I was in there. He got me out. And I'm thankful for that. And I like being in this place. I was listening to Earl coming up the road this morning. That man was a blessing to my soul. He was a blessing to my mind. But to hear the gospel preached, Walter, is a... a a joyful thing to those that believe. To hear Christ proclaim the glorious gospel of Christ. Walter's going to talk about the glory. But that's what it is. It's a rejoicing in the heart if you believe. But that same gospel is the savor of death unto death. To those who don't believe. That same, very, very same gospel. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. I determined to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified. Amen. But if our gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. We never preach ourselves, hopefully. Those who have faith and who believe kind of know themselves a little bit for preaching themselves. No better, Hopefully. Because we know we have absolutely nothing that we have not received. Paul set a difference here. Because there were those in Corinth at that time who were preaching themselves. And who were not preaching the gospel. We preach Christ Jesus the Lord. Who was God. Is God. Was with God. God and became down God manifest in the flesh Amen, that's right. who lived a perfect life who was crucified forsaken by God whose blood was shed and the redemption the atonement the justification the sanctification everything was purchased by his shed blood Verse 6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There is no glory outside of Christ that we'll ever know anything about. And if you know Jesus Christ, you know the glory. Now this word, the first word light in this verse, this is kind of tricky. That's why I wrote it all down. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. That light, that word light actually just means light. A source of light. He commanded the light to shine out of darkness. That's a source of light. Now where it says shine, that is the word radiate. Lampo is the word. I like that. I wonder where they got the word from lamp for. Where they got it from. Lampo is the word. This, the source is the bulb but it radiates out. It just doesn't sit there and shine. It radiates out. 
The second word shine is the exact same word, lampo. But the second word light has shined in our hearts, that's radiated in our hearts to give the light. That second word light is the word illumination. Illumination. This is a work from the outside of the lost. This is a work on the inside and it's of the spirit. The veil is removed and the light illuminates within every single believer. God who is light, Christ who is the light, radiates and those who have been found, which means they are no longer lost, those who have been given faith by grace are illuminated. The sun shines out from the earth, uh, out in space, but it illuminates the earth. And if you're on the earth, you can see. What is illuminated? Paul tells us the knowledge. Which that word means knowledge or knowing. That knowledge was always there. It's just now it's illuminated to you. Once the spirit works, it's illuminated to you. This knowledge. Now this is the exact same word in verse 4. This illumination of the glorious gospel, the knowledge of the glorious gospel. In verse 4, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. That's lest the illumination of the glorious gospel. It's the same word in verse 4 as it is in verse 6. The same gospel has a different effect on the found than the lost. The same message has a different effect on the found as opposed to the lost. To the one it is received and you are illuminated. That knowledge is illuminated. The knowledge of Christ is illuminated to you. If you believe. And that same knowledge, that same message, that same speaking is hid to them that are lost. This happens vocally, by voice. It is the gospel that is illuminated to us and in us. That's what you said last week, Walter, that made me do this. Think of it. I couldn't get it out of my head. One sinner to another sinner. From faith to faith. From faith to faith. Those same, that same message, the savor of death unto death to some, is the savor of life unto life for others. The gospel. And it's through the preaching of the gospel that God has chosen to save them what, which believe. It's still hid to the lost, but to save them which believe. When Christ opens the understanding of the scriptures to his disciples, what did they say? Those two fellows on the road to Emmaus? Didn't our hearts burn within us? When he revealed unto us what? The scriptures. But he was speaking to them. He was talking to them. And they had this illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It is through pro the proclaiming of the scriptures the gospel is preached. We have no other basis for the gospel than these scriptures. That's why we have them. They were a gift to us also. He opens our understanding of the scripture. And that also does mean when you read. Yes. But it also when they are preached to you. And that's why we say. You know, 
If you think we said something wrong, look it up. This is the only foundation we have for our faith in Christ. Other than the Spirit, which gives us the understanding, it's in these scriptures. This is where the truth of Christ is revealed. It is preached, and believers receive it. Because they are not faithless. They receive the gospel and the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God. And it's only in the face of Jesus Christ. The glorious gospel, the good news, the scriptures to which Christ has opened our understanding. Our inward man is renewed day by day. That's what Paul goes on to say here in verse 16. Our outward man perisheth. The flesh profits nothing. But our inward man is renewed day by day. Through his word. Through his gospel. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We were no different. If our gospel was hid, it was hid to the lost. It was hid to us at one time. It was hid to the guy who wrote this at one time. I was driving up here listening to that message earlier. He mentioned that. He said Paul was right there. Saul of Tarsus at the time at the stoning of Stephen. He said himself later, I was consenting unto the death of Stephen. I consented. I thought it was a good thing. Why? Because at that time, the gospel was hid to Saul of Tarsus. There came a day when the gospel was not hid to Saul of Tarsus. And now he's writing to Gentiles and Jews alike, telling them of the glorious gospel of Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. It is God's work, Father, Son, and Spirit. But we have it. We have it. Just like we have our gospel. It's ours. Thank God for it. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for all you've done for us. And thank you most of all for your son who came willingly, lovingly, and purposefully and performed and fulfilled all of your will in your way. Be with Walter as he comes to stand before us and preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us. In Christ's name. Amen. Yeah.